Good evening, this is Bell Geode, and we are back with some more X-Plane 11 in Virtual Reality. Howdy, folks, and we are back here in X-Plane 11, and tonight we are in the Seychelles. Yay! Welcome to the Seychelles Islands. Seychelles Islands are located in the Indian Ocean, just off the coast of Africa. And this particular scenery that we are going to be looking at over the next uh, couple of videos or so is from Maps to X-Plane and also in concert with Aerosoft, if I'm not too mistaken. The link, of course, will be in the video description below if you are interested in picking up the scenery. For tonight, however, I want to show off this new helicopter from V-Sky Labs. Now, you've seen V-Sky Labs work before on the channel. I've shown a number of their birds. I can't get enough of their aircraft. I think that uh, there's just something about this developer that I really enjoy, and I really enjoy showing off their aircraft, in particular their helicopters, since they're kind of sort of new to the helicopter scene and pretty much everything they've come out with has been a gem. Granted, it's not perfect, it's always a work in progress and if you ask the developer, he will tell you that everything is still a grand experiment. He considers everything like a test project, as it were. So that's uh, kind of the approach that he has and you know, it really shows. He's always updating everything. In fact, he's probably one of the most prolific updaters of aircraft out there for X-Planes, so yeah. So we're going to be taking a look tonight at the Denali H3 helicopter. You get two versions with this. You get the Denali H3 and the H3 Sport. And in addition to which, one of the nifty little features, as you can see, I currently have a pilot body. Of course, the skin tone is definitely wrong. I'm definitely not that light. But I also have a co-pilot. Hey, look at you. All right, we're going to call you Georgette. You are now Georgette, our co-pilot. So, hello, Georgette. And you might want to say hi to the audience as well. She's not very chatty, but eh, that's okay. Brunettes, what can you expect? <laughs> All right, so where are we? What are we doing? We are at Praslin Airport. I believe the island itself is also named Praslin. So what we're going to be doing tonight is we're just going to fly around the island. I'll be showing you uh, other portions of the Seychelles in upcoming videos. Um, the other aircraft that I want to show off, I'll uh, basically do some puddle jumps from island to island. But we're going to start out here tonight and we're just going to fly around the island uh, clockwise, actually, and check out uh, the scenery itself, which you can pretty much expect everything that you see here to be replicated on all the other islands. Of course, with variations, considering the fact that each island is unique and different. But a lot of the things that you'll see tonight, you'll probably see in upcoming videos as well. I just kind of wanted to get down low and personal with the scenery, so you can already see there's some rather beautiful looking trees here. They are 2D, mind you. They're not 3D trees. They are 2D, but they still look pretty awesome. And we will be seeing some 3D trees in our flight tonight. As a matter of fact, there's some right there. Look at those coconut trees. Those are 3D. Those are 3D. I'm hoping that more developers will get into making 3D trees, especially since there are other flight sims out there that do have 3D trees. So... That's all I'm going to say about that. You can watch a Three Grumpy Simmers episode that's uh, coming out soon, or probably out by the time you watch this video, and uh, yeah, you'll, you'll figure out. You'll figure out. Okay, but I think we have talked enough. The uh, first thing we're going to want to do, of course, is try to get this thing turned on. Now, full disclosure... 
This is my first attempt at a cold and dark start. Every test video that I've recorded with this particular bird, I've already had the engine started. I have never tried doing a cold and dark start with it. And also, full disclosure, you may notice this little tab there. That is uh, Avatab. That's for the little iPad that they have. Currently, I am in X-Plane Beta version 15. Now, that is significant because Avatab stopped working in version 15. There is an update for Avatab. I'm just too lazy right now to download it and install it. So we're going to be flying without Avatab, which also means we do not have the checklist. So I kind of pulled up the PDF, looked it over a few times, and hopefully I will remember the procedure. If, uh, if not, I'll have to lift up the Oculus Rift because I do have it on a second monitor, and I can refer back to that. And apologies in advance for the squeaky chair. Okay, so let's see if we can get this thing started here. Uh, I believe the first thing we're going to want to do is find the battery on this puppy and turn it on. All right, uh, there's the ignition switch. I think that's it, actually. I think that's it. Okay, so let's turn that. There we go. All right, so we got the switch on. Uh, we're not currently started just yet, but that is okay. Actually, can I turn this even further? No, I cannot. I can just go that or that. All right. So it's a learning process here, folks. Okay, so now that we've got that on, we need to make sure our fuel is on. So main fuel, bam. And fuel cock down here, bam. Make sure that our throttle is in the off position. Okay. And we're going to need our ignitions one and two on. So before I do that, I should probably close this little clamshell canopy here. There we go. Looks like we are now secure. Georgette, I hope you're ready to like jump out at a moment's notice if this thing blows up. Okay. All right. Ignitions. We'll get you on and you on. And I believe that is everything I need to have on. Oh, the lights. We'll go ahead and turn those on. That'll get our... Um, beacon position lights and all that good jazz on. Okay, I want to say everything should be good for a start. Uh, let me just make sure that all these breakers are in. It appears that they are, so this is good. And I noticed the little headset has disappeared, so I think we're just about ready for an engine start, so let's hold this down. All right, I think we have an engine start. We're just waiting for the temperatures to go up here. Okay, slowly but surely everything is coming up, but this is a good thing. As long as everything's in the green, we should be good to go. And I want to say that our transmission oil temperature is looking good right now, so we should be able to engage the clutch. And that will start the rotor. Just like that. Nice and easy. I love easy helicopters like this. All right, so we're going to wait till everything gets up to speed before we actually open up our throttle and bring everything up to the green section there. Wait for it to all sync up. I'll zoom in for you so that way you can see it a little bit easier. You can see the rotor RPM on the left side is slowly but surely working its way up to match the engine RPM on the right hand side. And then we're going to increase the throttle very slowly. And try to bring everything up to the green. You'll notice our generator light just went on, so the generator is currently functioning. And we're just inching our way up right now. We're also checking our temperatures to make sure that everything looks normal. So far it does. And 
we're about halfway there. As Bon Jovi would say, we're living on a prayer. And there you can see everything's coming up to snuff. A little bit more. And we're almost where we need to be. Okay, so engine RPM is normal. It's in the green and rotor RPM has caught up. So it's just about in the same place. So now we can activate our governor. There it is, and that'll keep everything where it needs to be. And we can also get our aux switch on, which will, of course, turn on our avionics. So let's set this to standby. You can see we're at uh, 1200 right there. The fans you'll notice have come on. The fans are automatic in this thing, so they will automatically come on to help keep the engine cool, the cylinder head temperature and all that good jazz. But other than that, we're pretty much set to go. All right, let me make sure I have not missed anything. There's really not much to miss in this helicopter. There's not much to it, to be honest with you. Okay, everything is looking good. And because this is not an aircraft, I'm not gonna do the uh, usual controls wipeout. That might end badly in this little bird here. But we are gonna go to the outside view just to take a look and make sure that everything's kosher before we take off and fly around Praslin. So, we'll be right back. So everything checks out outside, so that means we should be good to go. You may have noticed the windsock back there. Uh, we can't see because, well, Georgette's in the way. Sorry, Georgette. Uh, but yes, that means we are going to be needing to take, take off in that direction. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little hover taxi, and we'll stop by the hold short. Then we will turn on our transponder. We'll set it to altitude, and then we'll take the active and get out of here. I currently do not have uh, Traffic Global reinstalled, not in the beta version anyway, it's in my regular X-Plane version which is still on 11.41. So we don't have to worry about traffic right now with uh, this particular version of X-Plane. Okay, but everything is looking pretty good. The only thing I may want to do is I actually may want to get rid of the pilot body because it's kind of weird seeing myself like this so how you do that is you click on the seat and it gets rid of that incidentally you can do the same thing with Georgette here you can click on a seat and there she goes bye bye but we'll bring her back in because I love company on flights even if she's not very chatty all right so here we go We're going to need a little bit of right pedal as soon as she gets light on the skids. And I love that little skid sound there. Okay, we are up. And we're going to go to the outside view really quick here, so that way we can taxi to the runway. So, yeah, missed the hold short. 
by a little bit, but it's okay. I'm still trying to get used to this helicopter here. I've only flown it like about five or so times, so yeah. But it is surprisingly easy to fly. That is really cool. But then I, I wouldn't expect anything else from V-Sky Labs. A lot of the stuff that uh, V-Sky Labs models, as far as helicopter goes, uh, they're like home-built or experimental models. So they're really easy to fly. They're the kind of things that you probably only need a driver's license to be able to legally fly it. But of course, you'll still need lessons. I, of course, have not had any lessons. So we're just going to see if I crash and burn before this video is done. But now that we've got our transponder, well, transponding, let's go ahead and take the active and we're gonna fly around the island. So once again, we'll pull up our collective and we're gonna need that right pedal again. And we'll slowly but surely make our way to the runway. We'll adjust accordingly. I'm actually going to uh, tip us forward just a touch here. Alright, let's see if we can make it around this turn without taking out any of these taxi lights. Well, so far so good. And here we go, runway 33, we're wasting no time. We are getting the heck out of here. So up goes the collective, and we'll need to make some slight adjustments here with the pedal. Dip the nose down further, you can see the control tower over there as well as the fire station. I'm assuming that's a control tower. Maybe it's just a fire station, but it looks like it's a combination of things. And there we go. We are airborne. So let's go to the outside view for a moment, and we'll come back in once we pass over this little hill here. I happen to know there's a golf course on the other side. All right, so here is our little golf course, and you can see the villas around. This area is pretty much a tourist trap, so I'm kind of not surprised that there's a golf course there, because let's face it, a lot of the people that come here do enjoy playing golf. Why would you enjoy doing that in the middle of the Indian Ocean? I have no idea, but you know what? I'm not one to judge, because I actually do like golf. I just have not played, so there is that. It's always on my bucket list as uh, one of the things that I'd like to learn. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. There's tennis if you prefer. A couple of tennis courts there. I do like the fact that the lakes are modeled as well as the sand traps. So that is pretty cool. But then um, Maps to Explain seems to do a rather incredible job when it comes to creating their sceneries and so on and so forth. We've actually seen some of their work before in previous videos, and they've also influenced other scenery designers such as uh, Stefan Schro and AKA Monoblau. I'm sure you remember his uh, Thailand series of sceneries, the crabby sceneries that I showed you. Yeah, you might say he's uh, a bit of a protege of the maker of this particular scenery. So there we go. I absolutely love the rocks. The rocks are just so awesome. All right, so our plan is we're going to go straight ahead here, and I'm actually going to turn on the autopilot for a moment. This thing does have a rudimentary autopilot, so let me just make sure that we are pointed in the correct direction, like right there. And we'll also put on the altitude hold just to make sure we don't go into the drink. And it'll pretty much hold this attitude all day long. You can make minor adjustments. You'll notice that I'm putting in a little bit of left pedal just to kind of veer us off a little bit to the left. You can also move the cyclic like I'm currently doing now and that will of course turn us a little bit more to the left. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward as far as autopilots go and it'll take a lot of the strain off of you as you're flying. Over there, you will notice there is a yacht. 
and it is actually moving. That is a part of the scenery. That is not a default X-plane yacht. That actually comes with the scenery. Use magic binoculars there. If I had to guess, I'd say that's probably a carver, probably a 55 or a 60 foot yacht. One of them fishing type boats. But pretty cool stuff. That you're gonna be seeing a lot of in the Seychelles scenery. See, there goes another one right there. Although that's more of a sailboat rather than a yacht. But even so, it's got a little motor on the back. You can see the static ones there. All up in there, there are little villages. Uh, so you'll see little residences every now and then mixed in with the coconut trees and all the other different types of tropical trees there. I am gonna take it off of autopilot right now because I want to actually go over to this little saddle ridge here. And we're just gonna fly through there and then I'll put the autopilot back on and that should keep us relatively steady. So let me see if I can make my adjustments here. Uh, let's see, right about there should be good. Okay, autopilot's on. And while we're on autopilot, let's do a quick check of the gauges just to make sure everything's kosher. We're in the green, in the green, in the green. This is a little below normal, but that's okay. That's all green, that's all green. Okay, everything's looking good. And as you can see, we're still drifting a little to the right. So now we have to take it off the autopilot. I'm gonna go to the outside a little bit here, so that way we can enjoy the view as we go over this uh, little trough in between the hills. Okay, so the area that we're approaching right now, this is a very large beach. And I think what I want to do is I actually want to skim the surface. So we're going to bring her all the way down. And we're just going to follow the coastline here. Normally it's pretty sunny here, but of course I set the weather to have scattered clouds. And it's pretty random as to what it chooses to generate, especially since I'm not currently using Active Sky for X-Plane with this particular version of X-Plane. Typically when it comes to the beta, I try to keep it as light as possible. I don't wanna have a lot of plugins and so on in there, so you may notice that it looks more like default than anything else because of the fact that I wanna make sure that I'm testing it as lightly as possible. But yeah, look at those sand dunes there on this beach. That is pretty neat how they did that. Little slope down there. Of course, we are running out of beach and we've got some trees in the way, but I'll pull up momentarily. This is pretty much the southern end of Praslin. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. I don't know if it's supposed to be pronounced more French, so maybe it's supposed to be like Praline or Prelan, something like that. But everything that I've found seems to refer to it as Praslin, so you know what? I'm just going to keep calling it Praslin and that'll be that. All right, but you can see some more of those uh, 3D trees mixed in with the 2D trees. There you go. And I would assume this is probably another golf course here. It looks more like a giant sand trap to me. All right, there is a little farm over there. Georgette, what do you say we pay those little farmers a visit? I think that's a great idea. I don't know how you feel about that, but we're gonna go with that. So let's go over the highway here. Notice they drive on the left on these islands. And yes, the traffic does come with it. It is modeled. We're gonna turn around here and let me see, where did I leave that farm? There it is, right there. All right, so we're gonna go to the outside view and we're gonna see if we can come down in the center of this little farmland area. And that way we'll take a quick break before we head back around the island and back to the airport.
Okay, we are almost in ground effect, so we're just going to add a little bit of right pedal here to compensate. And we'll wait till we stop our sideways movement and we'll just bring her down. So there we go, not too shabby. That wasn't a very rough landing, was it? At least I didn't treat you like I treat Allie. I swear, Allie's going to need a chiropractor by the time she's done flying with me. But yeah, you can see that we're on a little bit of a slope here. And there's the road, and there goes, what is that, a Honda CRV or something like that? I don't even know. I'm not very good with my car makes and models and so on. But of course, just past the coconut trees there is the beach and of course the Indian Ocean out there. So we're going to be heading out that way right now. And I think I saw some more moving boats, so I've got a crazy shenanigan type of idea here that I want to try out. No, I'm not going to see if I can land on a boat, but I would like to see if I can catch up with one and maybe follow them around for a bit. You'll notice that there is a blade slapping sound right now. That's one of the other things that I really enjoy about this particular helicopter. The sounds in this thing are awesome. They are exactly as I would expect a home-built helicopter like this to sound. It's really cool. All right, you see that directly ahead? Whoop. I need to concentrate on my flying and less on my uh, magic binoculars here. But yeah, what I'm showing you is that catamaran. Now these catamarans are really cool because they go from island to island. Like they're actually, you know, modeled to, to drive or sail from island to island. So we're going to catch up with one here and take a quick look. As a matter of fact, if you look over that way, you will also see another one that's currently berthed at the port as well as like an old school fishing trawler and so on. But we're gonna catch up with this guy before he makes his way out of the bay. And I think there's another one over there. Yep, there most certainly is another one over there. And the interesting thing about these catamarans is that they will actually slow down and speed up. So eventually, once this guy gets out into open water, he's actually gonna start opening the throttle and heading to the next island, which I think is really cool how they did that. All right, but he's going slow enough now that we should be able to catch up with him. So let's kind of take a quick look-see. I will say there are no people modeled on these little catamarans, which is a minor, minor, minor letdown. I'm not going to hold the scenery developer to the candle for that, because honestly, the fact that they even modeled all the benches at all. You see that, right? All the little benches in the back, and there are some in the bow of the boat, in the front of the boat. All of that stuff is modeled, so I guess people would have probably been overkill, and we should at least be grateful that we've got all of this here. But yeah, there it is. Look at that. That is a catamaran. That is a well-designed catamaran. Look at that. You can even read the website on the side www.catcocos.com Inter-Island Boats Limited and check out the front there's even a little mural that is too cool if I were on that in real life I guarantee you one of those seats in the front that's where I'd be sitting right now but that is so neat it's got this little port and starboard lights on this is so awesome so yeah, eventually this guy is going to speed up and he's going to head on his way so we're going to leave him to it you see another boat over there. And we are actually going to turn around this way and head back to our island in question. So yes, I think we left off uh, right around here. The only negative that I have found about this scenery, you will notice that faint blue line that seems to cut through the terrain. I have no idea what's causing that. I don't know if that is an X-plane issue, uh, or if that is because of Vulcan, or if that's actually something that's caused by the scenery itself. I really don't know, and it's a slight immersion breaker. It's not totally killing my vibe. I still enjoy the heck out of this scenery, but just be advised, you're probably going to see it too should you decide to purchase this Seychelles scenery. You can see it there off in the distance. Once you've seen it, you can't unsee it, basically. <laughs> Alright, but 
what we're going to be doing now, we're going to go around the tip of the island here and we're going to make our way back to the airport. We should be able to see the airport once we get through there. So for now, we're going to go back to the outside view for, I guess, an extended outside look. And I'll even put this thing on autopilot to make sure that we're going to point in the right direction. So stay tuned. We will be right back. Alright, so we are back inside. Georgette, are you having fun? I think you are. You look like you're having fun, and that is A-OK -okay with me. Thank you for flying with me. Alright, we are coming around the island, and I don't know if you can see up ahead the little peninsula there. That is actually where our airport is. So we are almost back to where we started from and then we'll be able to bring this bird in. So we're still on autopilot here. And let me just check our gauges before I take it off of autopilot. Everything does appear to still be in the green, so this is good. We also have this nifty gauge here that tells you everything that's going on with the engine and the rotor system and the transmission and so on. So you can always keep an eye out on that. If you see anything red on there, that's probably a good idea that you're doing something wrong. All right, but let's go ahead and take the autopilot off. And we are going to head for the deck. We're going to skim the surface here as we make our way to the left side of that uh, little promontory there. That'll be where our airport is. You can't really see it all that well from here because I have our um, haze set to about 18 miles out. So it starts getting a little bit fuzzy once it gets past about five or so miles. And of course, once we get past 18, you really can't see anything at all. But we'll see how low we can go here. See the sun reflecting off the water. And we are probably about 50 feet off the deck right now. I'll try not to have us go for a swim there. But yeah, right about there should be good. And I'm adjusting slightly because I know that the uh, runway is Right now it's obscured, but it should be directly ahead of us there. All right, so really cool stuff. So sorry it's been a little while that I've actually been showing you more X-Plane. Let's just say I've been busy. I've been very, very busy. And I know I'm very behind on a lot of the add-ons that I want to show you. So things like um, Nimbus and Torque Sims Islander. That's going to be coming soon. What I'm thinking of doing is I'm actually going to do a side-by-side -side comparison for both of the Islander models. Not to tell you which is better than the other, because honestly, I think they're both equally very good. But they're also both different. Both of them have features that the other one does not. So I'm going to want to highlight some of the differences between the two, and that way you can decide yourself whether or not you want to get one or the other or if you want to do like I did and end up getting both. And there's also the Avro Vulcan that I want to show off at some point in time but I've got to figure out where's the best scenery to show off a big behemoth like that. And of course the Cowan Sim uh, Bell 222 UT 
I want to show that off as well. And I did promise uh, Mr. Cowan that I would also do a startup tutorial for his bird. So you can expect that in the near future. I'm thinking we'll probably go back to Key West, Florida for that video. But all of that is coming up as soon as I have time enough to sit down and actually record all of this stuff. I just know it's been a while since I've done any x so I kind of wanted to fill in the gaps here and give you kind of a heads up as to what's going on in the x world. I have to say Beta 15 feels like it's just about there. I'm sure there's still some minor tweaks that can be done just like with anything else. But other than that, I'd say this thing is almost ready for prime time. Just a few more bugs that they need to take care of. All right, but as you can see, we are back at the airport and we are actually going to take a quick look at the airport terminal itself because honestly, I think this right here is a work of art. I mean, look at that. You can see all the AC units and everything. It is just incredible. And those little points at the top of each uh, edge of the roof, little gabled roof there. And in the back, you've got these covered areas. I'm assuming this is probably for like valet parking and so on and so forth. But look at that, that is amazing. That is not something you see every day in the scenery. And as we visit some more of these islands here in Seychelles, you're gonna see just as much love paid to other airports and other points of interest in this little island archipelago, archipelago here. All right, but there you go. We're gonna go ahead and bring her down. So let me go to the outside view really quick and we're gonna turn around and see if we can plop her down exactly where we took off from. Keeping in mind the windsock says we need to be facing the other direction. And there we go, folks, we are down. So welcome back to Praslin Airport. And just to remind you, this scenery has been brought to us by Maps to x -Plane in concert with Aerosoft. The link, of course, will be in the video description below. Our chariot for today has been the Dynali H3 by V-Sky Labs. And the link for that will also be in the video description below. So I hope you've enjoyed our little uh, 25 cent tour around this particular island. When we come back to the Seychelles, we're gonna be showing off other aircraft such as the Pilatus P6 uh, Porter. So be sure to tune in for that. That's gonna be coming as soon as I can get the videos done. But for now, I wanna thank you for joining me on the flight. This is always has been Bell Geode, and I've been flying in X-Plane 11, in particular X-Plane 11.50, beta 15. It is still beta, beta is beta. If you see any bugs, make sure you report those bugs. The quicker that we can get everything squashed, the quicker we can make beta 15 turn in to the release candidate that we want for 11.50. Alrighty folks, that will do it for me. I'm gonna power this thing down off camera, but I thank you as always for watching. If you enjoy what you've seen, please feel free to give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I will catch you on the next one. Ciao.